Hello, hello, hello. Notice anything different? That's right. The eye colour has changed. Anything else? No? Good. <laughs> On today's episode, we're going to talk about shagging. <laughs> A lot of shagging. <laughs> A lot. You'll get that shortly. <laughs> yes, there will be a horrifying amount of shagging. Not the good kind of consensual shagging either, but the terrible other variety. This is Almighty Answers. Lovelies and dearies, welcome to another episode of Almighty Answers. I am your host, the Almighty. Look at me. Don't I look all almighty? Ooh, look at me muscles. <laughs> right then, today's episode will involve rampant fornication that happens in the Torah and partly in the Bible. <laughs> The entirety of the Abrahamic canon, if I am to be honest. <laughs> if there's anything you need to know about the Torah, it's that it really isn't the greatest guide for how to conduct oneself sexually, or the very model of familial relations. Why? It's rather simple, really. If there's a law in there, it's for a reason. Because someone shagged the right or in many cases, the wrong person. For example, there are laws banning having sex with one's mother, one's father's wife and one's sister because someone inevitably tried it. Perhaps all three at the same time. And when I say someone, I mean my special someones. <coughs> However, there isn't any law explicitly banning someone from setting themselves on fire or going out to drown themselves because, well... That's right. You truly are us most reet creation. <laughs> People weren't bloody doing it, but what better way to deter someone from shagging their mum, dad's wife or even sister than putting it in some scrolls and then say that I told them to do that. <laughs> Wait a second here. Oi, Gabe. Did these bloody numpties really pin the blame on me? <laughs> anyway, let's kick off this sordid affair by telling the story of... Lot. He were the bloke that brought down us judgment on Sodom and Gomorrah. <laughs> Yay! In fact, the term Sodomite comes from this name, Sodom. Oh, well, sod it. Let's tell the story. Lot were one of us most reet blokes. He were the nephew to Avraham, who you should remember from a previous episode. Crikey, isn't that a beaut? Look at the foreskin on that one. That's right, that bloke. <laughs> Lot were righteous, a well-class chap living in Sodom when he went out for a walk to City Square. Now, Lot was so class that he invited a couple of strangers to his home. <laughs> oh, isn't that Christian of him? <laughs> well, no, no, it weren't really, because Christians didn't exist at this point in time, but it were right neighbourly of him, wasn't it? <laughs> Lot and these strangers get to his home, and these blokes were well-fetching, good-looking like, because they were a couple of angels. Now, did Lot intend to have his own sexy times with them himself? Well, who the bloody hell knows? <laughs> Obviously, I do. I always know. Either way, you don't. Someone really badly wanted to shag these two chaps. In fact, a lot of someones did. As a massive bunch of the townspeople come to Lot's home and started singing... Actually, none of that were true because these randy sods did not want to take anything despacito at all because they were storming Lot's home and wanted to shag these two blokes desperately. Desesperaditos. <laughs> not at all, despacito. The cheek of these townspeople rampaging at Lot's place to rape two of us most re-angels. <laughs> you can tell that Lot were in a well-proper bind and he knew he couldn't give up the two men, so what could he do? That's right. He gave up his own ruddy daughters, <laughs> who just so happened to be virgins. Oh, what a noble, gladly bloke that lot were. <laughs> yeah. You see, women, particularly a father's daughters, were his property, and sex weren't so much about pleasure at this point, but about establishing alliances, and more importantly, who inherits what. <laughs> well, obviously, 
the males inherit everything. <laughs> they weren't complete savages. <laughs> Fortunately for Lot, and really most importantly for his virgin daughters, the men were actually angels, as I said, and they convinced Lot to come inside the house as he were negotiating. If, if you want to call it that. <laughs> he were negotiating with this marauding group of rapists that were Sodom's down people that Lot arguably knew somewhat well. <laughs> anyway, these angels tell Lot to get inside the bloody house and shut the door behind him. And then they tell Lot and his daughters to get the out of Sodom. <laughs> yeah, yeah, GTFO. Which they do. But the other members of Lot's household didn't really think I would destroy the home. <laughs> Me? Why would I ever do something like that? <laughs> Smart. Frankly, what a bunch of numpties to faff around the house as a massive group of rapist marauders are just outside the door waiting to shag and it wasn't like these townspeople were particularly discerning either. <laughs> but nevertheless, the rest of Lot's family stayed inside the house and you know what happens next. That's right! Annihilation! Yay! I blew Sodom and Gomorrah the f*** up because of those rapist wankers. Although I simply could have killed that lot with Michael or Gabriel, but, well, you got to have a little style, isn't it? Yeah. So what's moral story? Well... Can you believe there's actually debate about that? <laughs> Some Jewish scholars say it's about Lot avoiding all the depravity around him, whereas others talk about the value of hospitality. <laughs> you what? No, 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 you can't rape these strangers, but you can shag the hell out of his virgin daughters. Blimey, what a great message that is, isn't it? However, there's another story that's quite similar. Eerily so, really. <laughs> It comes from the Book of Judges, except this book weren't about the blokes faffing about in powdered wigs. <laughs> I put it to you, my lord. <laughs> the star of this story were a Levite, or a member of the priest class that comes from the hills of Ephraim, whom his concubine had abandoned. Already a proper class start, this one, isn't it? <laughs> anyway, the Levite knocks about to Bethlehem to get back the concubine, and he needs five days to convince her father to let her go to him. The Levi and his concubine are on their way home, but they need a place to stop for the night. But the priest does not want to stop in Jerusalem. Why? He probably should have, given what's about to happen to him and his missus. Well, not, not missus. <laughs> yeah. They stopped in the town of Giveah, that is in the province of Benjaminite. Much like the stranger angels knocking about Sodom, no one would give the Levite and his concubine a place to stay for at night. There was a lot of lazing about in these days, depending on the kindness of strangers, as if everyone were Blanche Bloody Dubois. <laughs> Fortunately, well, for now anyway, for the pair, they come upon an elderly man that offers them a place to stay for the night. This elderly bloke were a Benjamite, and also a Levite like the story's protagonist. What do you know? The townspeople knock about the elderly priest's house and sing. Again, none of this were true, as there were, well, a real apuro, because these raping numpties were out of control. They wanted all the sons in the desert to scream, Ay, bendito, por favor, and they were insatiable. So what do the two Levites do? Huh? You guessed it! The travelling priest gave up the concubine he'd trekked to retrieve to the savage crowd and the elder local Levite gave up his virgin daughter. These rabid townspeople rape and beat the women until morning only for the two Levites to wake up the next morning to find them in a heap at the doorstep. Now, at that point, it's not entirely clear, well, to you lot anyway, whether or not the women are dead. But the concubine the young Levite had traversed to reclaim dies. He then puts her on his donkey and takes her home to Ephraim when... Plot twist! He cuts up her body and sends a piece to each tribe. Why? As a bloody, literal bloody warning, of course. <laughs> Later, Jewish texts then place the blame on Benjamin or Binyamin for this death because it happened on his land. <laughs> That's ridiculous, isn't it? It's a bunch of numpties. Now, it's not all gang rapes, as this next story about bad shagging has to do with... David. 
Uh, did you reckon we'd finish with him? No, 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 no. He were one of us most reek, gladly blokes, playing his lyre and what not. Now, David had a big family, if you'll recall, and he weren't the greatest of role models to his children for reasons I've already discussed. <laughs> David had a daughter named Tamar, who appears in the book of Second Samuel. Old Sammy the two, I call him. <laughs> I've never called him that. David also had a son named Amon, who were half brother to Tamar and Amon were well despacito for his half-sister. Kinky. Although he probably wouldn't want her to forget her apellido as they reasonably shared the same one, <laughs> if surnames existed back then. <laughs> now Amon were well lusty for his half-sister, but it were taboo for siblings, even those of the half variety, to shag. Except a greater concern is that Tamar were a virgin, which meant that someone would inevitably find out it were Amon that shagged her, and that if he didn't marry her, then no one would. He were all despacito for her, but not enough to marry her, although they're bloody half-siblings, so what the <laughs> His best mate and cousin were a bloke by the name of Yonadav, and the two came up with a plan, of sort, for Amon to be able to shag Tamar. The plan were, when David came to kiss his incestuous son goodnight, to tell him that he was sick, and to send in Tamar with some food. <laughs> now, David were a reed bloke and father, except for all those times he weren't, so he would never deny his son anything, particularly when Amon was sick and does as requested. Tamar gets to the room and starts cooking for her half-brother and Amon asks her to bring him the food. Brilliant bloody plan so far, eh? Now Tamar brings over food and Amon is on the cusp of raping her and saying bad cosas al oído, except she says that they can do things the right way by asking their father for permission. The cheek of a woman to presume to have a choice as to what happens with her body. <laughs> now, Amon ignores this and rapes her anyway, because, well, of course, and immediately goes from despacito to encabronado with his half-sister. <laughs> yeah, he finds her revolting after having had his way with her. However, nothing happens to the incestuous rapist, as everyone tells Tamar to keep quiet about the affair, including her father and other brothers that are apoplectic, and understandably so, huh? Dirty bugger. There is somewhat of a happy ending to this, I guess. Tamar in Hebrew is a date palm tree and it is practically indestructible because no matter what you do to it, it grows back. <laughs> so there is that. Yeah. That's not the only story involving a Tamar, but this one is decidedly less rapey. Uh, it involves Judah, who were one of Joseph's elder brothers, and whew, will we get into that? madness later. Yeah, Judah had a son by the name of, uh, uh, seriously, maybe you were having trouble coming up with the name and blurted out the first thing that came out of his mouth. <laughs> I don't know. According to, I do, <laughs> but according to Genesis, I found no favour in, uh, and smote the wanker. <laughs> to be honest, I simply wanted to kill him because his name was so bloody stupid. <laughs> that left a problem for Tamar, who were Ur's widow, because I smote him before she could have a son from him. So, according to Jewish law, she had to end up with Ur's younger brother, Onan. <laughs> oh, weird, isn't it? The Jewish tradition mandates that the younger unmarried brother must marry his elder brother's widow if the one that died did not have children with her. Not only is there that joy of marrying one's sister-in-law, but any son that the couple had would technically fall under the dead brother's lineage and would therefore inherit double the portions from both dads. <laughs> eh? Us fault? I didn't make the bloody rules. <laughs> well, I suppose I did. But it's you lot's problem because you don't know how to sod him well read. Uh, to be fair, illiteracy was rampant throughout most of you lot's existence anyway. <laughs> anyway, Onan had an issue with having to shag his sister-in-law only to impregnate her and lose out on his part of the inheritance. The cheek of it. He had a workaround, of course, and he would go really despacito with Tamar, but he ejaculates outside her didn't mind the shagging, and neither did I, but... Ooh, I will not tolerate the spilling of seed! Uh, that's why I smote him, too. <laughs> oh, I love a bit of smiting. Now, Tamar had a real conundrum on her hands, or womb, or whatever, because she were a twice-widdered woman without any sons, which back then were the only use a woman had. Yeah, sons. Uh, she insisted to Judah that she marry Judah's youngest son named Shelah, but Judah denied it because Shelah were too young. Funny, never seems to stop arranging marriages for the girls. <laughs> 
Anyway, Tamar were well miffed. Some time passes, Judah's wife dies and Tamar hears about this, so she apparently, quite Bella Keita, of her own accord, decided to become a cult prostitute for a brief moment. <laughs> Judah were feeling a bit randy himself after mourning his dead wife and decides to visit a prostitute to, well, fulfil his manly desires. He goes into the tent and lo and behold, there were a prostitute for him to shag. It was Tamar, <laughs> but he didn't recognise her because she were wearing a veil like she's bloody Superman or trying to avoid COVID. He starts getting all despacito. Despacito, quiero respirar tu cuello despacito. Deja que te diga cosas al oído, para que te acuerdes si no estás conmigo. Despacito, quiero desnudarte a besos despacito, firma las paredes de tu laberinto y hacerte tu cuerpo todo un manuscrito. He starts getting all despacito. This time, though, unlike all the others, he meant it and they have a good shag, even though Judah is well old at this point. The prostitute, after the tryst, asks Judah to pay her in goats because of course, specifically requesting a single goat, so maybe not that great a shagger. He didn't have a goat with him, well, because obviously he knocks about with a fucking goat before going for a shag. She insists he leave behind his stuff at the tent as collateral until he gives her the goat, which he does later, except there were no prostitute there. <laughs> Some bloke hanging around at the crossroads where the prostitutes were said that there was never a cult prostitute at that location, so a really ancient gig worker... I don't know. Three months pass and Tamar gets preggers, as one does, so we know Judah has some good seed. That's why I didn't smite him, because we were a reed bloke. At least he didn't spill it, but he were actually a right tosser until very soon. Judah were well upset because Tamar were pregnant and unmarried. <laughs> cheek of it. The cheek. He is enraged and confronts her about the pregnancy when she spills all the proverbial tea and brings out the literal receipt by showing him the belonging to the man that impregnated him. <laughs> yeah. Plot reveal. <laughs> the items were his that he left behind when he finished shagging her. So this revelation humbles Judah and he goes from a haughty wanker to a better person. <laughs> well, this lovelies, we took a detour into some of the more sordid and terrible stories from the Torah regarding promiscuity, although really it was about rape, which wasn't that atypical in those days, to be honest. I hope you learned something. Be sure to check out the video in the link of his very own Philip Bozinovsky and his cover of Despacito. Do continue liking, sharing and subscribing us videos and channel to please the almighty. <laughs> That's it for this episode. Tatty bye now, me ducks. Tatty bye. Subscribe, that is, my children. Now share, like, and leave a comment. I get lonely sometimes, and I love me some questions, and hey, remember, soon you'll be able to follow me on other social media channels. <laughs> you will.